morning, friends. This is Ellen Pitts, your Raleigh and Cary area realtor. Today, we're talking about five things buyers do that cost them money. These home buyer mistakes are things you do not want to have on your buying a house checklist. We're talking about it right now, so stick around to learn more. This is Ellen Pitts, your Triangle Area Realtor. I bring you videos that help you save time, money, and frustration in the buying and selling process, and also videos to help you love living in the Triangle, highlighting all the great things we have to do in the Raleigh area. So if you're thinking about buying or selling, or you just wanna learn more about the Raleigh and the surrounding areas, you'll wanna to subscribe to my channel for more videos. Let's dive into today's topic. The first thing that buyers do that costs them money is not getting pre-approved for a loan. First, you need to understand a few things about the pre-approval process. Different lenders mean different things when they say pre-approval. One might mean asking you how your credit is, how much you make, and if you have any outstanding debts. Without pulling credit or doing any independent investigating about you, the buyer, a lender can tell you you are pre-approved solely based on your memory of your financial picture. Not a good idea. Even if your memory is perfect, what if you've been the victim of identity theft and there's stuff on your credit that you're oblivious to? Do you really want to find that out after you've put down a non-refundable deposit and paid out of pocket for your inspections? You don't want that. Trust me, you don't. Before you make an offer on a house, you always want to have completed the following steps. First, you want to fill out the lender's application. Have the lender pull your credit and write you a letter with the amount you are approved to purchase. Some people stop here, but it's really important to take the next step before you make an offer on a home. The next thing you should do is submit all the lender requested paperwork. This is going to be things like your tax statements, your W-2s, your employment verification. Once you get under contract for home, it's very easy to get lax in the paperwork because face it, you've started packing and things get chaotic once you're in moving mode. Remember that you're not the only person getting a loan. When your paperwork goes to underwriting, there's a stack of other people's paperwork in front of you. If you wait too long to get your paperwork completed, you will not close on time. A delayed closing always costs you money. There are storage fees for storing your moving truck, there are extra nights in hotels, and there is lots and lots of stress. Get your paperwork in and through underwriting before you make an offer on a home. Number two, not getting a survey. You should always get a survey when buying a home. The purchase contract we use in North Carolina says that it's the seller's obligation to sell the property without any encumbrances. When you're buying a home, the seller is responsible for fixing it if anything that belongs to them is encroaching on a neighbor's property. Recently, I was involved in a transaction where the house was encroaching on the neighboring property. It was supposed to be no more than 25 feet from the property line, and it was 23 feet from the property line. The neighbor had the right to force the seller to move the house. You can watch the video to see how it turned out here. If there's some kind of encroachment issue on the property, you want to know about it when you buy the property, and it's not your responsibility to fix it. Not when you or a neighbor sells and you are now liable as the homeowner. Number three, financing furniture before closing. I know, I know, new life, new house, new furniture. But wait, if you finance furniture or anything else for that matter, a new car, your kid's college education, an engagement ring, you could lose your new home. And this is why. Remember all that paperwork we talked about earlier? Your pending approval was based on your financial picture at the time of approval. But if something in that financial picture changes, i.e. you take on a new debt, you're no longer approved for that loan. And if it's the day before closing, guess what? Your loan is going back to underwriting. There's a little bit of a grace period in the contract in case you can't close on time, but if your approval takes longer than that period, the seller may decide it's better not to wait, especially in a competitive market or if they had a backup offer to begin with. Never make large purchases when you're in the process of buying a home. Number four, choosing the wrong lender. There are certain lenders that I'm familiar with that when I see a pre-approval come through my email, I just think, oh no. It really is a bad idea to use cost as the only factor in choosing a lender, or any professional for that matter. Of course, cost is always a factor in the businesses we use, but it should never be the only factor. When businesses cut costs too much, it can mean that they have to run lean on manpower. In these situations, the lenders, underwriters, and processors might have a larger number of transactions per person to manage, which means phone calls can go unreturned and it can just take longer to get your loan to closing, which means it may be more likely for your loan to be dropped. I was once the listing agent for a property where the buyer used one of these lenders. We tried to convince them to use a different lender from the beginning, but the buyers were set on using this particular lender. They put all their decision power on the cost of the loan rather than the whole process. 
Three days before closing, after many unreturned phone calls, we learned that the package had just gotten to underwriting and the loan was not approved. Always consider recommendations and online reviews when choosing a lender. Number five, not considering your realtor's advice. Sometimes people who haven't had a good experience with a realtor think that the only thing an agent does is unlocking the door to show them the home. But the real value in an agent is the experience and expertise they bring with them when challenging situations arise, and they almost always do. Buying and selling a home is a complicated process and there's many places where things can go wrong, some of which you've heard about in this video. I understand that many people have had bad experience with the agents in the past. Believe me, I've had my own bad experiences before I became a realtor, but I promise you, there are many good, trustworthy, and competent agents out there to choose from. The key is to choose someone that's a good fit, that you know you can trust, and that you feel good talking to. Thanks again for watching. I hope you learned something today. And if you like this video, would you mind sharing it with a friend? Have a great day.